Well, we're back now with Angus Blair. And Angus, I kind of want to pick up on what I was hearing on the sidelines of this heavy oil congress in Oman yesterday. There were a lot of questions about how dire this situation with Iran actually is. And I got the sense that those conversations are still ongoing and, and they're really not giving up on it yet. No. The geopolitics of this region has become both noisy up front and the background. And much of it is not transparent. The conversations are continuing in the background to try to tone everything down, and the Americans playing a, uh, the American government's playing a role too. The State Department trying to calm everything. Uh, Oman playing a role, Kuwait a little bit too, the Americans in the background. But I have to say, it's quite difficult to determine where that's going to play out. But you see it to an extent in the oil press. Absolutely, and in terms of what's going to happen next, in terms of the U.S.-China trade spat seem to be much more uh, worrying for them in terms of the demand. Yes, China is the key at the moment in terms of determining price. And quite interesting, in the last few days, the president of China meeting with the African leaders trying to determine policy and help. And including President Sisi. Yeah. Yeah, Angus, it's Nancy here in Singapore. Speaking of China, I mean, obviously, many guests that Hadley was speaking to yesterday talked about concerns about demand slowing from China. But when it comes to Iran, there is this hope out there that China will keep doing business with them. Today, we're hearing about India looking at ways to, to keep some Iranian oil imports flowing to India. I mean, how significant is that, considering that India is a very large customer of Iranian oil? Well, it's, it's quite interesting, again, the geopolitical stance that both China and India are making a very strong statement in saying this in terms of wanting the, uh, fulfilling their demand for oil and saying to the markets, we're going to continue taking Iranian oil. So I think that's something for especially the, the, the White House to listen to in terms of uh, what's mm. happening but more on a political level as well as the realistic level for oil. But the key here is also, is really, as we mentioned, is China and what it, it is doing and what, what its market is demanding. In the region, too, I have to imagine that many people are looking at what the global growth impact will be of the China-U.S. trade fight. And even putting that trade fight aside, I mean, considering that growth is going so strongly in the United States at the moment, many must be asking the question of when does this end? I mean, what is the view you're hearing there in the region? Well, frankly, it's quite interesting wearing my historical hats as a strategist, but obviously being here and looking at Egypt and the, and the region, and it's quite clear that the, uh, the situation in terms of, of trying to balance everything is finding equilibrium in the global markets. And I think if there's a bit of a shock, the markets will try to find their equilibrium. So, Nancy, that's what we've been seeing in the last year as we've had this kind of in instability coming on a political level and what's happening with Iran. So it's quite interesting interplay. And of course, nobody wanting to really upset the White House either, which I find is quite interesting. So people may be angry, they may be annoyed in terms of other governments, but the fact is they don't want to really upset the White House. So what they'll do is they'll stand, they'll make some ground, try to find a compromise, as we saw in Mexico lately. So I think that's what we're going to see. Behind the background, people will think, OK, we can't really do much here. We'll do a little, we'll stand some ground, and then we'll try to find a compromise. A little bit about what, for example, is happening between Canada and Saudi Arabia at the moment, where there's been more than a spat, where behind the scenes, according to what I hear, is that diplomatic sources are working out some kind of compromise that will face safe on both sides. Uh, face on both sides. Well, Canada versus Saudi Arabia, and certainly Saudi Arabia, the GCC countries versus Qatar. I mean, that story has kind of gone quiet, but of course the Kuwaiti Emir, as you say, is heading to the United States now for talks in Washington. I mean, how much do you really expect to come out of that meeting? Because they are now considering, and we've heard the story again and again, that there could potentially be a canal dug that would cut off Qatar. Well, that, that I have to say, is an <laughs> utter waste of money. It doesn't make sense from any point of view at all. I think that if Saudi Arabia does it, for me it would be a kind of sell signal because you're, not, you're using public money for something that is not needed uh, and, the, and, the, and the government needs to spend on domestic infrastructure instead. So the spat is going on between Qatar and the region and I have to say Oman and Kuwait trying to dampen everything down, but this is going to take a long time to play out, a long time. Long that we may not be here when that spat will still be going on between the, the, the leaders of the countries. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.